I decided to do a few videos back to the very, very basics. This would be for anybody that's starting from scratch and has never done any pouring. So I have set up um, the stuff that I purchased from the dollar store and from Walmart. And I'm going to kind of go through everything really quickly for the beginners. And this was still about 50 bucks. So it's not cheap to just get the basics, but you might could scrimp on a few things. And so I'm going to quickly go through everything. And I did get Elmer's glue this time, even though I, do ne I never use Elmer's glue in my regular pours. I got it today to try because everybody else uses it. And I really just prefer Floetrol. It's just safer to use because you, it's proven to be a good quality product. Elmer's glue is just glue. And if you want to sell a painting down the road, I'm just not so thrilled with having glue in my painting to sell. So I would typically use Floetrol. I bought five bottles of glue at $1.50 a piece at the dollar store. So that is about uh, $7 or something like that. And you can get a quart of Floetrol at Lowe's or Home Depot for $7. So I'm just suggesting you try Floetrol instead of glue. I have no idea how this is going to pour today because I never use glue. But what I did is a one-to-one -one ratio of glue to paint. And I'm using all apple barrel colors today pretty much. So I'm going to go through the colors real quickly. Uh, look. Lagon, Laguana, <laughs> Palm Leaf, Holly Branch, Wild Iris, Royal Violet, Admiral Blue, Bright Blue, Bright Magenta, bright red and I try to get bright colors can you tell yellow harvest orange and I got a big bottle of uh, white and a big bottle of black even though I, I just have a little bit of black mixed up so everything is one to one ratio and then I had water so I have my little cup here of extra water and I've mixed everything up and added the water to get to the right consistency and the consistency you want is kind of like warm honey pouring off of your stick. So you see how it's a steady stream, it's not drippy, like real watery, and it doesn't stick to my stick like peanut butter or say really thick yogurt. So it comes off in a steady stream. That's, that's what you want it to do. I have one more color that I have not mixed, just so you can see me mix it from scratch. This is one of the, the deeper green. So I've got about an ounce of paint. These are three ounce bathroom cups. So I'm adding pretty much an ounce of color and about an ounce of glue. And then I add water after I have totally stirred up the color and the glue together. That's when I add water. And I did mix up my whole big 8 ounce bottle of white. I, I mixed it all up so I've got some in a cup and some in a 12 ounce squeeze bottle. So I got the squeeze bottle at the dollar store. It's very flimsy. I have an Amazon link below my videos that has better quality bottles than these. They have this, these dollar store ones have this big wide opening. The other squeeze bottles I have on Amazon are, um, they have a finer point at the end of it and they have screw on lids. They're a sturdier plastic and they do not leak at all. So I prefer those, but I wanted to show you this totally for a beginner's pour just so you can have an example of how people start with, with the really basics. And um, I'm using puppy pad on the table, which I got a 14 pack of puppy pads for about four or five dollars. But you can use a dollar general um, 
any dollar store plastic tablecloth, which you know is usually about a dollar. You can use that to pour on, and actually the paint will peel off of it pretty easily. So there is the consistency that I want. Creamy, but still running off my stick in a steady stream. That's the right consistency. I also mixed up some metallics, which are going to be in a separate video. Rose gold, antique copper, laser folk art. And then these came from Dollar General. They're crafters closet, gold, and silver. The silver is nice. The gold looks pretty bland. But so does... So does the rose gold from Folk Art. It looks pretty bland, too. I'm not impressed with the metallics, but that will be a different pour, so I'm going to move those cups aside, and I'm going to use black probably with that and do something. And yeah, I got the stir sticks. Uh, these are like craft sticks. There's two, two of these packed together for about a, a buck at the dollar store. Yeah, I got the three ounce cups to mix all of my paints in. Uh, these are three ounce bathroom cups. Got them at Walmart. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for sales. It's called OGX is the brand Coconut Milk Anti Rakage Serum. It is a hair product, it comes in the hair section at Walmart some drugstores, maybe Target, and if, if it all else fails, you can order it online on Amazon in my link below. The key ingredient at the beginning of the ingredients list is dimethicone. That is what you want. Okay? So, with OGX, this bottle will last you a year. It, it just goes a long way. You only want, I'm not going to push down totally, I'm just going to slightly press and do a drop in each cup. It's hard to squeeze it and get just a drop. You can also, you can also unscrew it. It smells wonderful. And you can drip a drop off the end of the, dri the dripper thingy, you know, the squeeze thingy. You can do a drop that way. I'm not. I'm actually not putting any in the black or white. It smells so good though. And then I'm going to just stir a few times, not many times, just a few. And every so often, I wipe my stick off. If Sometimes I'll share the sticks between the colors, but you want to share them in like colors that are you know, similar to the other color you're using. And if it's not close to the color, then wipe it off or get a clean stick to um, stir the next color. Because you don't want to dirty up your color with another color that does not work with it. Like, I can put the yellow into the green because that's going to go away, like, immediately. And, um, so I'm just making sure I stir the OGX in a few times. That's all. I am doing this from home because we are heading out of town today to go on a camping trip. And I don't have my paints and my setup from home here anymore since I have my studio. So this, I'm doing it on my kitchen table again. And um, I've got, I'm doing it with my cell phone. So I'm not sure how the quality will be. I'm not sure if I'll be in focus because I've got my phone kind of in a precarious spot right now. Ooh, that OGX smells good. Okay, so I'm going to remove my puppy pads. I, like I said, I had to buy glue. I bought um, a pack of dollar gloves. So they're probably, they're probably made larger, and they are, so they're loose on my hands. I like to have nice, tight gloves, but these are loose because they're just, they were just like a four pack of gloves that were at the dollar store. Oh, and I also got six canvas panels. 
So here is, uh, I got eight by tens. And I think these are 11 by 16 canvas panels, which typically, if you um, put too much paint on them, they will warp. But the thing about the warping is if they warp, once they're totally, totally dry, you can kind of bend them and manipulate them again to get them straight. You can place a book, you know, put maybe like a piece of parchment paper down over the painting and then a heavy book and let it sit for a while. And also if you just put it back in a frame that's the correct size, then you will, you'll be able to um, straighten the board back out. I'm doing my little series of paintings with Elmer's glue, which I do not care for, but I'm doing it anyway. So I'm going to do this experiment for you. All of the colors are Apple Barrel brand, mixed one to one with Elmer's glue, and then lots of water because when I put the Elmer's glue in there, the paint just was a really thick mixture. So I don't know if that's normal, but that's what happened with mine. So I'm going to do an 11 by 14 canvas panel that I got at Walmart. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to do a dirty pour. It's gonna take at least five to six ounces to cover this canvas. And I'm going to do, I think um, blues to greens and yellows. So I'm gonna switch it up, vary it just a little bit. So I think I'll start with a squirt of white in the bottom, a good amount of this navy color, deep blue, admiral blue was the color I believe. I'll do some turquoise, I'll do the deeper green. Bright yellow. Another squirt of white. I'm going to do this other green, which is palm leaf green. Finish out the turquoise. Brighter blue. the lighter green, deeper green. This is more than I need for this canvas and I'll put a little squirt of white. Okay. I'm going to throw it on there, I do believe. I'm going to try to flip it over as quickly as I can. Ah, did pretty good. I'll use the trusty little push pin, release that air pocket that's at the bottom of the cup because the, the paint is, you know, stuck in there. So you put some air bubbles, pop some holes in it, and it will release that. So this is going to be a green painting, apparently, which I knew it would be. I try with these to let them sit for a few because it gives the OGX a chance to work in the paint. I don't have my heat gun or heat torch here and I'm not going to use a blow dryer that will dry the surface of the paint. So I'm just using a straw with my breath to pop little bubbles that I see.
You can also just kind of bang your canvas a little bit. That will help pop bubbles. These are sticky cups because of the glue, I do believe. The colors are just not vibrant like they are with the other brands of paint that I typically use like Liquitex Basics, Master's Touch. Artist Loft. Those color and deco art, those colors are typically really vibrant and these are just very subdued. I don't know if it's the glue mixture Or what? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just trying to get this to cover this one last corner. Now I want to stretch it back again this way a little bit. I want to bring out some of those funky cells that are up there. Stretch them this way a little bit. Alright, so I think... I think that's going to be it. I don't know, I have, I have some paint in my cup, maybe over this area here. Since this feels kind of linear, I did my cup that way. Take my straw and see if I can. I usually use a skewer. Drag some of that blue out. Well, that's kind of pretty though. I don't want to mess with that. I like that better. It helped. Got a few air bubbles, but not too bad. Okay. I'm going to leave this one. At least... There's some cell action going on that's interesting. It's still kind of subdued, but I can deal with it because at least it's got some patterns to it, that kind of thing. So there it is.
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Give me a thumbs up, please.